One of the first instances for me in seeing a movie poster in the cinema lobby was um, um, like a doorway into another world, like the, the, the excitement of a potential adventure or that you were going to be sitting through. And, and so the, the poster would stay with me for a long time because of the, I just was drawn to the, the artwork that was on the poster. as well as seeing the movie and then loving the film at the same time. Um, the poster to me was very much an integral part of the marketing and I didn't know what marketing was when I was a kid, but just it was just an image that you liked. And, and then as you got old, as I got older, I collect posters and put them on my bedroom walls and, and until one day I realized that they were all made by most of them were made by the same person, which I didn't realize at the time. I found a signature on one of them and then saw it was on another one. And, and um, that's when I realized that it was uh, a job for somebody to create these posters. I was, I was probably about, I don't know, 12 or 13 at the time. And that was when I found out what an illustrator was. As I got a little bit older, I would go to movie fairs and start like getting really into collecting the posters of not particularly like the really expensive posters because I didn't care about it being worth something. It was just what it meant to me, like the art that was on the poster. That's all I cared about. That's all I wanted to see and to see it as big as possible. Um, and I would study the posters and that was part of my education was sitting down, lying like, on, the, on my bedroom floor with a magnifying glass with a rolled out poster and just inch by inch kind of looking at it and going, wow, this is amazing. Most things start with a communication from um, a potential client. So they may have seen my website and contact me through the website and then, uh, or even a phone call um, happens. Some people even get in touch with me through Facebook Mess, like fake my page on Facebook and that's sometimes the first port call but m more often than not it's an email um, and then I want to know more about the project if I'm interested and then uh, we start taking it from there really. Sometimes they may have an idea that they want me to pursue and I, I'll throw in my ideas. So yeah recently I had a Skype conference with about six people for a project that's happening in July and uh, and which is, it's another great way of doing it. It's, you can bounce ideas around and we pretty much nailed a, an idea within 20 minutes of how we should approach the project, which is really good. And, and then from there, it's like, you're almost left to your own devices and you will create roughs and ideas to then submit to them for approval and for feedback. And then it's very much a collaboration between yourself and the client. So a client will have uh, feedback like, because they know the, they will know the project in and out more than I would. So, and they're, and they're the people I need to please, first of all. And so um, that's kind of how it works really. Um, and from that point, you know, when it's at a certain stage of roughness, uh, that has all the elements and color ideas and all the rest of it, then it's like they'll, they'll say, yeah, we're happy with everything, let's go for, to the final artwork. And then it's a case of sitting down for eight or 12 hours a day, just, just uh, bashing it out. Sometimes I'll do um, thumbnail ideas for compositional ideas, which are very quick sketches on, a, on, a, on a, either a sketchbook or even a bit of paper or even an iPad, just kind of just get ideas down and it might be pages and pages of ideas, which the client may never see actually. That's more for my kind of internalizing of the work. So once I am happy with a, a particular look, then I will start um, gathering reference images, which the client may have supplied or I've had to source myself and um, start piecing it together as almost like individual assets um, to make a bigger picture. Um, so 
more often than not, and, that, and that, that's the way I used to do things when I was working traditionally um, before I was using a computer to finish my work. I would work compositions up in Photoshop and then um, get them to a certain state of layout and then project them onto artboard um, and then paint it from there. That's kind of how it used to work. So instead of projecting onto an artboard, I'm projecting it onto a, a digital artboard in a way and, and, and redrawing it all out from that way. You know, the computer is a tool in, in more ways than one. It's, it's just another way of doing it. I truly believe if Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci were around today, they would be using a computer to create things with um, because, you know, they were at the forefront of technology of their time. And this is the forefront of technology of our time at the moment. And to, for people to, I mean, there are purists, which, I mean, I paint, you know, I can paint, I can, I can draw. It's not like I... I'm a faker, I don't just press a button and, it, and it's done, but a lot of what I do and what a lot of artists do who are, are, who are doing a good job is it's not all about technique, it's a lot about aesthetic and what goes on behind uh, the actual artwork that, that helps tell a story and, um, and, and relationships between images and positioning and you know this all these other aspects, it's not just about it looking good uh, in a technical way, it's more of uh, uh, it has to speak to me when I, if, if it doesn't, if it doesn't make sense as a rough, it's not going to make sense as a final piece. So when I'm working on a rough, I always have that, you know, that the composition is almost key for me. It, is, it, it, it plays a really big part in, in what I do because the composition sets me would set me apart from other people as well because that's these are my choices that I'm making that are then you know hopefully being accepted by the client um, and that you know it's the composition that is me more than the style or the the finish um, although that has to be a, a high standard otherwise no one's going to want to work with you again um, but yeah pretty pretty much you know it's, it's an important part of the process and the, the computer's always been a part of my process well, professionally it has. Um, before I could afford a computer, I, I, I did everything uh, with, I cut things out and moved things around on the page and got compositions done that way. But with a computer, it just, it makes that <clears throat> a lot more of a seamless experience and, and an, an experience that is in, as enjoyable as it would be doing anything traditionally for me. So I get the same amount of kick out of creating something digitally as I do something traditionally so um, whether it's sitting at this artboard over here which is a, a Cintiq display or whether it's a real artboard with paints and pencils um, I'm getting a similar or the same degree of uh, excitement from both. You're moving things around, you're resizing things to make them more important or less important and how they relate to each other and then all of a sudden it's like the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle sometimes and it just clicks and you go that's it. I think that's it. And then you submit it to the client and they, they either love it or hate it. You just don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully they love it. And you're like, well, pff, it, you know, it makes sense. There may be a few changes here and there, but f for the most part, you've kind of nailed that structure of the piece and how it's all going to work. And then it just makes the next stage, which is the, the, um, the, the laborious kind of part, which sometimes is laborious. It's, it's not always, but they actually, it's quite fun kind of just making it, making it kind of come more alive with, uh, with techniques of uh, sketching and painting and paint and, um, you know, ink and gesso and all the little elements that I've grown up loving my whole life from, from looking at other art and, and uh, using that knowledge to then make it, make it hopefully burst off the page and kind of become bigger than life. Uh, 
Uh, Lucasfilm got in touch with me um, last November about the celebration um, 2017 in Orlando, asking me if I'd be interested in doing the key art for the for the show, and I pretty much instantly said yes. Um, being a huge Star Wars fan and and uh, a lover of all the artwork, it's a big part of why I became um, an illustrator in the first place. So to be asked to do that was a real honor. Um, and the job entailed um, um, character badges. There was 18 characters that they required illustrating in a particular style that they were looking for, um, along with the uh, actual key art for the for the promotion of the of the show with the posters and the banners and all that kind of thing. So it was a real a real uh, honor and a pleasure to be involved in that and. And then to get the opportunity to actually go over to the event for the four days in Florida and um, meet all the fans and just, uh, it was a really special, a real special occasion. And to be part of that, I'd, I'm incredibly grateful. Yeah, the, the main poster, the key art, was, uh, was a real challenge because Star Wars is so vast and over 40 years of movies and TV shows and, and animation and so many other things, books and you name it, that to try and find a way to celebrate Star Wars and the 40 years that it's been around was was quite a challenge um, from the point of what do we include in the in the artwork because including everything was there was no way that was going to happen. So we had to be quite. Um, stringent on what we could and couldn't do and um, and there was a number of revisions that went through. Uh, the first idea I had was actually a, a, a triptych of sorts where we had the three main characters of Anakin on one with all the prequels, like lots of characters from the prequels and things going on. And the second, the middle one was Luke with everything from the original trilogy. And then the third one was Rey in the middle, surrounded by um, basically the future of Star Wars. But then it also included the new movie Rogue One, which should come out. So it kind of got a bit confusing when that happened, because Rogue One is set before um, the original trilogy. So the timeline was kind of skewed and it didn't 100% make sense. So I kind of looked at it as like the prequels, the original trilogy, and the future of Star Wars, that kind of thing. And they liked that idea, but ultimately it was just too complex. There was so much going on, and um, we decided to go for more of a, a single image and focus more on the Skywalker family story rather than uh, trying to fit too much in, uh, because that's where it all began, and that's kind of where the new movies are continuing with, um, apart from the 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 uh, Star Wars stories, including the Han Solo um, story, which is coming out soon. Still, to this day, I, I'm very humbled by it. It was just really from the heart. They just loved what they saw, and, and it meant a great, great deal to me. Um, because when, when you're working on these things, you know, you're pleasing the client, you're pleasing Lucasfilm, you're pleasing all the way up to Kathy Kennedy, which is fantastic. And, but still, you don't know how the fans are going to react. You don't know how the public may or may not like it. So, but to actually be there and meet people face to face, and I think they were probably, they, even if they had something bad to say about it, they probably wouldn't anyway. But um, everyone was really um, supportive and told me how much they loved the artwork and it was the greatest celebration artwork they've ever seen. And all, it was my head, I'm surprised I even fit outside the door. I, I was getting a bit of a big head, I guess, but I didn't, I didn't let it get to me. I stayed very humble, and which I am. I don't really gloat too much about things, but yeah, it was good. It was a really good experience. I think it's great to be in a position, which is quite rare when you're doing this kind of work, is to be to actually know what the story is about and have a good understanding of a feel of a film before you create the artwork to then advertise it. Whereas in the in the motion picture industry at the moment, like 
to see a preview of a movie is would be almost non-existent. So you kind of have to would have to go off um, information and words from the director or words from the marketing team or, or people involved in the film to kind of get portray it across. And then you have um, Im, you know uh, still images to look at and all that kind of stuff. But to for the Shout Factory stuff was completely different. Most of it because it's already out there. It's been out there for a number of years. And so you have a, a, a completely different take because a lot of people have lived with that for a long time. So they know, they know who the main character is. They know, they know a lot of the hierarchy of the, of the story and, and how, people, and how the, how the uh, characters relate to each other and who the bad guy is. And, you know. So you can kind of get away with a few, a few things differently than you would if you were doing... Um, a, a film that had never been seen before that was coming into the cinemas. Um, so it's different in that respect, but still, I still try and, uh, when I'm working on a Shout Factory project, I still try and keep that cinematic feel about it, almost like it could have been a piece of artwork from the time when it was released. And it was almost like, oh, we've never seen this artwork before. And, you know, was this like a, an uncovered gem or you know that kind of thing. For some reason yeah the horror genre seems to be really excited about illustrated poster art which is fantastic. Um, I've never always, never really been a huge horror fan. Like growing up I always avoided the horror movies, the scary movies. Um, but since working on projects I've kind of had to force myself in some ways to watch some of them uh, and, and, and find the elements that are important to the story that will help the, the, the advertising artwork. Um, but, you know, action adventure movies are always, you know, I always loved those as, as a child growing up. Um, um, and I still do today. Um, our thrillers and I, I mean, I like all sorts of genres of movies. There isn't just one particular one, but I mean, obviously like fantasy, sci-fi, um, are, are high up there too. After seeing Anna Leibovitz's um, wonderful photography for Vanity Fair, I felt compelled to uh, use one of the images as reference. Um, I wanted to do something for the 40th anniversary to mark the occasion. The night before the anniversary, I just had a few hours to spare and I sat down on my sofa and got my iPad out and started draw, drawing it. Um, it's just my way of recognizing uh, the Star Wars franchise as, as something that I love and wishing it a happy birthday. It's the same age as me, pretty almost.